Hey first graders, it's Friday and you know what that means. We're going to have a science day and not only is it a science day, but it is the science day before Valentine's Day. So I thought we would celebrate Valentine's Day today by doing lots of Valentine's science. So today we're going to do a little collection of experiments all about physics and we'll talk during our 2.15 meeting today about what physics is exactly. So while we're doing our experiment today, just be collecting some information about what the experiments are about and what you learn during the experiment. I don't expect you to do all of them. I do expect you to do one. If you would choose to do more than one, that's great, more fun for you. But today's assignment in Google Classroom will require you to post just at least one experiment that Mrs. Mann demonstrates today, okay? Here's the first one. So I bet last year in kindergarten, you probably did some experiments about what sinks and what floats. In fact, I know you did because I remember walking up and down the hallway seeing you do that. So today we're not going to do a what sinks and what floats experiment because I have a feeling if Mrs. Mann collected some stuff around the house, you could probably guess which ones would sink and which ones would float because you learned about that last year. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about exactly why things float not what floats, but what makes it happen, okay? So last year, I would be willing to bet that one of the things you may have tested would have been a penny. Maybe you forgot the result. So let's see. Make a guess before Mrs. Mann drops this penny in the water. Are we going to say that it sinks or floats? Here it goes. Sank right down to the bottom. Did you say that it would sink? If so, you were right. Now, friends, I want to know if I take this penny and, hmm, if one penny floats, what do you think a bunch of pennies would do? So I'm going to take a handful of pennies. Just a good dozen or so. We talk about 10 all the time. Let's take 10 pennies. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make sure that my penny, well, first of all, let's touch this material. We have aluminum foil. What do you think this piece of aluminum foil will do when Mrs. Mann puts it in the water? Sink or float? Let's see. Very interesting float around. Hmm. If this aluminum foil floats, maybe it will help with my penny situation. I'm going to try to keep my pennies from sinking. So I think I will protect it with my aluminum foil. Let's see what happens. Ready? One, two, three. Oh no, it still sank right down to the bottom. Hmm, but the aluminum foil floats by itself, but the pennies, even when they're in the aluminum foil, happen to sink. Hmm, let's see. You know, I'm thinking, wonder if there's something that we could create to hold our pennies that would help our pennies to float couldn't wrap it up in the foil. What do we get in when we want to float? A boat floats, right? So this first experiment is called a love boat. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a boat. Now I'm going to first with a heart that I've cut out. And the only reason Mrs. Mann cut this out is to help me form the shape of a heart. You don't have to do that. Your boat can be an animal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that shape of the heart to make it move as well, as you can see. I'm just going to fold my aluminum foil in a way that sits up and creates a little boat for my penny. Just like if you and I were going to get on a boat. So, I'm going to take my 10 
Let me tell me that's my little love boat. It sits up like that. It has walls on it and it has a, it's a little bit deep. Okay. And I'm going to take my pin pinny. And then ball foil and it's just bank right down to the bottom. I'm gonna test my boat and see if my pennies will fit in my boat. Ready? All right. First of all, let's test our boat. Oh, look how nicely it floats. So I'm gonna get my pennies in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> Look how nicely my boat is floating. There's exactly 10 pennies in my boat and exactly 10 pennies in my foil. But these 10 pennies drop straight to the bottom and those do not. You know what's puzzling to me is that my boat is actually bigger than my foil. What makes this teeny tiny shape with exactly 10 pennies float while this one I'm just meant to say sink, while well, that one floats. What floats our boat? So the answer to this question, first graders, it's all about what we call density. Okay, so a big kid word has a lot to do with that study of physics that we're going to talk about later. Okay, I want you to think about every single thing in the whole entire world being made up of teeny tiny things that we can't see. We call them molecules, and what happens is big things stick together, and when they stick together, they create that object, okay? Everything is made up of those little particles that we call not everything. Pins, pieces of man's headband, my ring, the table, even the water. There's molecules all in there, and if they're stuck really, really, really tight, tight, tight together, it makes the object more dense. The tighter those particles are stuck together, the more dense the object is. And things that are more dense sink straight down to the bottom. Now, if those particles, particles are spread apart and there's space in between those particles, it's going to be less dense and it's going to float. So, what happens is my boat is less dense than my foil. Now, there's another thing going on here, too. So that word is called density. Another thing that's going on is called buoyancy. When we talk about buoyancy, it's exactly what it means to float. So this object is more buoyant, better at floating, than this object is not buoyant at all. Buoyancy has to do with the pressure of the water pushing up. So here's what has happened to my boat. Those particles are more spread apart and it covers a bigger space of the water. So what's happening is there's more water pushing up on the boat this way than there is my foil ball because there's not a lot of space there. There's, it's not taking up enough space for the water to push up on it. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to create your own love boat and see how strong you can make your love boat. So if you really want to test it, you can continue to put more and more and more pennies in. You can choose this other thing to test in your boat. You can test marbles. You can test other coins. You can test Cheerios. You can test just about anything. But see how strong your boat is. Keep filling that boat up and see how many pennies your boat will hold before it starts to sink. If it starts to sink. And since this is Valentine's Day, you can also take things like candy hearts. And see how many candy hearts Test all different 
different types of objects. With your book, with your book. If there's more than one kid in your house, your brothers and sisters may want to see who can make the best, most buoyant goat and test them that way. Okay? That's really good. Craft experiment number one is the love goat. Okay? Make yourself a love goat. See how many pennies or other objects that you can float in your love boat. The better it floats, the more buoyant it is. If it sinks, it's not buoyant at all. Okay, oh, I think my boat is starting to sink a little bit. Let me see how strong my boat is and how buoyant it is. You test yours. Okay? See you later.